Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to day three of our Hurricanes unit. Last time we left off on the various parts of a hurricane. So if you have not done today's attendance, please pause the video now. Go do the question for the attendance, which is what three parts make up a hurricane? And I'll pause right here. Welcome back. So let's take a look. When we last left off, you were looking at the different parts that make up a hurricane, and you created a diagram outlining each of those various parts. Your diagram, some of you sent me your pictures. You did a phenomenal job creating a diagram of what a hurricane looks like. The middle of the hurricane is the eye. This is the calmest part of the storm. It's typically between 30 and 40 miles, uh, and it's nothing but calm, sunny skies. Uh, this is basically where the area of high pressure is centered when the rest of the low pressure is centered around this area. When you look at the outer ring of the eye, it's known as the eye wall. Uh, this is the border between the rest of the storm and the eye. And then the rest of this uh, hurricane is known as the rain shield. And this is where all the rain and wind is stored in the storm. Now, let's take a look at creating a hurricane. So I did a little science experiment, and let's see if you could identify the different parts of a hurricane as the video plays. Welcome to another edition of Mr. Jackson's science class. Oh, wait, sorry. It's supposed to be social studies. Well, we're doing some more science stuff. Last time we took a, took a look at convection currents, and we looked at how high and low pressure form storms. Well, remember, the bigger the low pressure, the bigger the storm the bigger the high pressure, the nicer the day. And when you're looking at the creation of hurricanes, you are looking for that tropical depression that would later on turn into a tropical disturbance and then turn into a full-blown hurricane or a cyclone or typhoon, depending on whatever part of the world you are in. Well, today we're going to create a hurricane. So you need a bowl of water, a stir, and food coloring. Whatever color you want, have at it. So you put stir in the water, get the water spinning really hard, really fast. Remember, you don't want to spill water. You want to keep it nice. You don't want it to ripple and make waves. Just trying to get that spinning motion as you get it going. Okay. Put a few drops of food coloring in, and there it goes, spinning. Oh, let's get it spinning some more. See, now it dissipated because it's like they're representing a storm running over land. Well, if you add the coloring after you've already spun, so we get it spinning a little bit more faster. Right there, there's your. So, if you look at the video, if you look right here, there's your eye, there's the eye wall, and here are your rain bands. So, right there is the creation of a hurricane. So, just so you can see it right here, it is outlined in a video, and the spinning is created by the Coriolis effect. So, let's finish the video. Coriolis effect. And there is your hurricane. Hope you enjoyed today's simple demonstration. So today's objective is by the end of class, you'll be able to identify the origins of a hurricane. And by the end of class, you'll be able to read and take notes on hurricanes with the focus on today, storm preparation. How do people prepare for these storms? And how are the people in the Caribbean preparing as well as people in the United States? And remember, this all goes back to our essential question. What causes extreme weather and how do people deal with it? So quick question. How is climate change affecting the development of hurricanes each year? I would like you to explain your reasoning and find an article to support your claim. You should be able to do this in about a paragraph. I'll give you about 10 minutes. Uh, in the Google slide, there will be a timer. 
Uh, and I will give you about 10, 15 minutes to use the timer. So you can pause the video right now and use the timer to answer this question. In order to answer the question, you will use today's document, which is titled Remote Learning Day 3. And here is your question right here. So is climate change affecting the development of hurricanes? Yes or no, and explain why. Use evidence to support your claim. Again, find at least one to two articles and support your reasoning and cite the evidence in your paragraph. So you can pause the video right here and then you can resume when you are done. Excellent. Now let's take a look at this video to see if you were correct. Strong winds, deadly storm surges, and a trail of destruction. Recent hurricanes have wreaked havoc in the United States. And you might be wondering, how does a hurricane work? So the important thing to understand about hurricanes is that they only form over warm water. Think of warm water as the fuel to the engine that is a hurricane. A hurricane forms when warm air over the ocean rises. As that warm air rises, cool air sort of fills in below it, kind of creating that cyclonic action. At the top, it forms clouds, and those clouds create the rain system that we associate with hurricanes. So many people are wondering, is climate change making hurricanes worse? Yes. Um, remember we talked about how warm water is the fuel for a hurricane? Because of climate change, the oceans are much warmer than they used to be. In recent years, we've seen very powerful hurricanes like Harvey and Florence, and the obvious question is what do they have in common? Both of these hurricanes formed in unusually warm waters. Hurricane Harvey formed in waters around the Gulf of Mexico that were on average about one degree Celsius warmer than average. Florence is being powered by waters that are two degrees Celsius warmer than average, so that's a lot more energy going into the storm. The worry with Florence is not just when it hits land, but how long it will stick around and how far inland that will go. So does this mean we're going to have more storms like this? The short answer is yes. Uh, the longer answer is storms like this are even worse. Um, there's some talk about potentially raising the hurricane category scale to include a six, so for stronger winds than we currently have. Um, there is some concern or some evidence suggesting that hurricanes are moving further north. So that means they're going to show up in places that they haven't traditionally existed, and potentially even in places like Europe. When there's a hurricane, when there's a wildfire, climate change often comes up. But climate change is our new reality. And if we don't take steps to mitigate it, we will continue to see powerful, severe hurricanes. Um, and more and more people are going to be put in harm's way. So if you said yes, good job. Again, remember, you should be able to cite an article or some kind of website, not just this video. So I do want some other piece of evidence in your write-up indicating whether or not it is going to affect them. So for our next part, we are going to look at tracking and preparing for a hurricane. So similarly, like we've done in the past, uh, you're going to analyze a couple images to answer questions. These are opinion questions. It is solely based on what you see. It is not based on the text. So when you look at this first image, well, here is an image. There are some things that are color-coded, some that are lines and dots. So what I'd like you to do, again, using the timer and the Google slide to help you along, answer these questions. What do you notice? What are the black lines? What are the red dots? Or sorry, black dots. What are the red lines, orange lines, etc.? So as you go through each of the questions, you can set the timer at the end. Here's a larger picture of the same thing. So this way you can leave your page open or whatever you'd like to do. You can now set the timer for about 10, 15 minutes to answer those opinion questions. You can pause the video right here. Good. So now what I'd like you to do is read section six in your reading. So look at section six, and I would like you to then go into your worksheet, and I'd like you to answer the question in this box. In section six, you are tracking and preparing for a hurricane. 
Write a summary of how people track and prepare for a hurricane. Include the terms meteorologist, hurricane watch, hurricane warning, and the Saffir Simpson scale. You may now pause the video to answer this question. So how do they track storms? How do they come up with these things? So now that you've taken a look at the Saffir Simpson scale and how people prepare for storms, let's take a look at what the different categories are. Well, why do they even come up with different categories? So here I've given you a couple of examples. So why do you think we have a need for these categories? So take a minute and answer the quick question. You can pause the video as you answer that question. Excellent. So let's take a look at what the different categories look like as they affect this house. When it comes to hurricanes, each one's impacts are a little bit different, but the wind speeds that we talk about along the Saffir Simpson scale, those are very specific and the damage caused in those categories kind of predictable. So let me show you. Let's start off with a category one storm. And the damage here, not too bad. A couple of shingles fall off. You can have some palm fronds bending in the wind, but everything basically remains intact. Category two, that's where you really start to feel it. Look at the windows of the house. They can be hit from debris from the outside and already start breaking in a category two. Your trees are significantly bent over in the wind and the siding of the house itself can break flapping there in the wind, adding to those eerie noises inside. Category three. I've heard only a category three, but it's not only anything except really bad news. In a category three, you can have the door of the house blown in because the winds get so strong. You can have the roof of the house start to flap up and down in the wind because it's going to lift off those weak points, and a lot of those trees start to fall. Category four, the damage is even worse. You get most trees falling, most of your windows breaking, most of your shingles fly away, and then Cat 5 is as high as the category scale goes. By Cat 5, no shingles remain anywhere nearby. The holes in the roof get so big that the walls of the house start to fall because they're not attached to anything anymore. There won't be any trees up in the neighborhood. That's just catastrophic damage. But again, that's just from the wind. And there are other impacts from hurricanes, and they all vary through the season. So stick with the Weather Channel to keep you safe. Tropics head towards your neck of the woods. So when you look at the categories of storms, they are there to help people prepare for the amount of damage that may be coming. So when you look at the warning system, there's a warning and there's a watch. Watch just means, hey, you should be aware that there's a storm coming. Warning is, yeah, it's coming. You need to actually prepare for this. And in 2010, the last time we really got hit by any storm was Hurricane Sandy. Uh, in recent years, it's been recategorized as Superstorm Sandy because as it hit New Jersey, it really wasn't a cat. It wasn't a, a storm. Uh, I shouldn't say. It wasn't a full-blown hurricane. It had actually been downgraded back down to like a tropical storm. But it was right on that cusp of a hurricane and a tropical storm. But because of the wind and storm surge, it actually was classified as a super storm. So let's take a look at the impact that super storm Stan Sandy had on our area. And this is a time-by-time uh lapse of going from hey look it's a warning to when it was here to the devastation it caused afterwards This is actually the storm that's going to be merging with Hurricane Sandy to form the 
Beth Franken storm. Hurricane Sandy hammered the Bahamas early Friday after leaving 21 dead across the Caribbean. So we're calling it a super storm. What, what is that all about? As this storm moves farther north, it will expand. It's just really moving into a question of where. This morning, I formally declared a state of emergency uh, in anticipation of Hurricane Sandy. We should not underestimate the impact of this storm, and we should not assume the predictions will be wrong. The MTA has announced that they will start shutting down service. The subway is starting at 7 tonight, buses at 9 tonight. This guy at the beach was saying that, oh, this is all for nothing. Guy says, in 40 years I've lived here, nothing has happened. And uh, this could be the one time. This is a serious and big step. If something looks like it's stupid to do, it is stupid. Stay on the Barrier Islands for 36 hours of hurricane force winds of 75 miles an hour or sustained, not gusting, is stupid. Tens of thousands of people were ordered to evacuate coastal areas on Sunday from Maryland through Connecticut as Hurricane Sandy prepared to make landfall Monday or early Tuesday. There's a shot of Atlantic City, New Jersey this morning as Hurricane Sandy is on her way. Stock and options markets are closed today. Thousands of flights have been canceled. Earnings reports are being delayed. And like I said, Sandy isn't even here yet. The East Coast grinding to a halt as Hurricane Sandy prepares to make landfall. What are the, the major steps you should be doing to protect your home and the belongings from damage from flooding? Well, everybody should have a go kit. And everybody should have a plan as to where they're going to evacuate to. And let relatives or friends know where it is that you're going. Just like people were doing, we wanted them to um, make their preparations early, start thinking about um, putting aside some of their pet's food, um, some clean water for their pets for drinking, uh, their pet's medications, their pet's medical records. Two crew members are missing from the HMS Bounty. It was a tall ship. It has sunk. Well, that is a live shot of a crane here in New York City. It has flopped over. This is a massive storm. The most important message that I have for the public right now is please listen to what your state and local officials are saying. Uh, when they tell you to evacuate, you need to evacuate. morning as it absorbs the aftermath of Superstorm Sandy, where economic damages could be in the range of 10 to 20 billion. At least 30 people have been killed in seven states. More than 8 million homes are without power. And in New York City, the wounds are particularly severe. In the borough of Queens, between 80 to 100 homes caught fire last night and were destroyed. Public transportation, meantime, continues to be closed after extensive flooding. There is no timeline on when that will change. The level of devastation at the Jersey Shore is unthinkable. People did have access to information that was still going on. Um, a lot of people were getting tweets. There's ways you can get tweets without actually having internet or being on Twitter. Because everyone has a smartphone, they're taking a lot of photos. Everybody's a reporter now. Exactly. Right. Um, and, you know, there was incredible images being shared. What are the problems we're trying to assess damage at this stage? Well, there's two types of, of damage we're talking about here. One is property damage. So how much damage is there to people's homes, to office buildings, to roads, to the subway system that gets people to work? are still without power as the East Coast struggles to recover from Superstorm Sandy. At least 55 lives have been claimed so far in the U.S. Here in New York, Manhattan is beginning a difficult recovery process with paralyzed transportation services and power outages. You can just see massive paralysis coming to the city. 
Yeah, certainly. I mean, the city's just not set up to have everybody who needs to work here drive in. You have to have three people in the car. The bottom line is the streets can only handle so much. President Obama and New Jersey Governor Chris Christie surveyed storm damage across the Garden State. For all of you look around and see all this destruction, that's fine. But you know what? All that stuff can be replaced. You look to your right and to your left, to your husband or wife, your son or your daughter. Right? Those are the things that can't be replaced. Day three of Superstorm Sandy recovery and the death toll has risen to at least 72. Nearly half of those in New York City where fires still smolder in Queens and there are reports of looting in Brooklyn and Long Island. Meantime, tens of thousands of people in the Northeast are badly trapped in gas lines and limited public transit to return to work this morning. Superstorm Sandy likely delivered insurance companies a $20 billion bill. Recovery is underway. And New York is starting to build again. The inspection to the crane on West 57th Street are complete. We plan to reopen public schools for classes on Monday. The MTA really did a phenomenal job of getting subway service partially restored in just a few days. The governor was just speaking. It looks like some relief is going to be on the way for New Yorkers in New New Jersey. Look, it's been, uh, it's been a long week, and it's been a long week for everyone. It's not over. There are still inconveniences. Uh, but it could have been a lot, lot worse. And let's not minimize what we went through. You know, sometimes we can have a, a short memory. After the storm we went through on Monday, uh, everything shouldn't be back to normal by Friday. It's going to take time. So how do you prepare for such a storm? How do you get ready for this? You know, we were caught off guard. I mean, we knew it was coming, but... It had been a long time since we had that level of devastation. Even just a few years prior, we had Hurricane Irene that hit, and that did some serious damage with the back end with the wind. Because it's the hurricane itself is really just strong wind and rain. Fine. That does the initial damage. It's the storm surge that causes the most damage. And when you look at what happened with Sandy, uh, the beach, the pier was destroyed. They just recently finished rebuilding it a few years ago, uh, but that was completely destroyed. You couldn't even walk down the beach. The sand was pushed all the way up to where Ripka's is. Uh, a lot of Rowayton was completely inundated and flooded uh, or destroyed, which is why a lot of the areas have been raised up because now FEMA had declared that an, a, a national emergency, which is why all the houses had to be lifted a minimum of five or 15 feet off the ground to protect against storm surge. So when you look at the damage that was caused, you know, it cost Norwalk. We were, I was without power for over a week. And, you know, at least with this quarantine, we still have our luxuries of being at home, but we can't go anywhere. Whereas Hurricane Sandy, we could go anywhere and do anything, but there's no power. So it was like the opposite of the quarantine for us now. But we had to prepare for that. And that's something a lot of people don't know how to do. So what you're going to do now is look at the visual discovery and landfall, what actually happens and how people prepare for this. So same thing we've done in the past. You're going to look at this image and then answer the questions right here. So using slide 17 through 19, what do you see in the picture? And you're going to do the same thing, go through the pictures. So I'll give you a few minutes to pause the video and then continue with the questions. So you can now pause the video right here to answer those questions. Okay, welcome back. So now that you've finished answering those questions, again, they were just simply opinion questions. The disaster begins. Read section seven. Same thing we've done in the past. You're going to write, read the section and read it, write a short summary using the words wind, rain, storm surge, and the word Caribbean. You can now pause the video while you answer that question. Now, Finally, now what happens? Well, we've looked at how people prepare, how people are warned. Now the storm has hit. Now what? We need to recover from the damage. 
So just like before, you got about 10 minutes. Take a few and take those 10 minutes and take a look at these pictures and tell me what you see. You can now pause the video while you answer those questions. Now that the disaster is here, we need to clean up from the disaster. Read section eight and do the same thing. What happens after we clean up from the disaster? So now you can pause the video and answer that question. Your exit ticket for today. This is going to take a little bit of time, so I may end up continuing this part into next class. Uh, so see it where you are. If you still see that you're going to need more time, uh, please let me know because this is a lot of information today. So for your exit ticket, how has the Caribbean been impacted by the increased severity of the hurricanes each year? As we've seen, climate change is affecting these hurricanes at a, ma uh, at a massive level. They are seriously considering making a Category 6. This past year, just with Hurricane Maria uh, and Florence and Harvey, uh, they really wanted to increase the storm categories or the Saffir Simpson scale. And now when you look at this, how do you prepare? Well, that's what I'd like you to do. I would like you to pick a country in the Caribbean and identify how they're preparing for hurricanes each season. So you're going to, have to do a little bit of research on their government websites. So once you pick a country, you need to investigate on their website. So look up that country. Every country has a website. And you would look up information on their government and hurricane preparedness. And so I'd like you to outline how that country prepares for a hurricane. And so that is what you're going to work on the remainder of class. And we will probably pick up with this part the next class. Any questions, you can email me. Uh, good luck. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video series of how you make hurricanes with the little experiments that I've shown you. And I've been really impressed with all of your diagramming. So good job with that. And I will talk to you later.